Today I'm super excited to show you a new addition, a new mod that we're adding to the Jeep. We tend to drive um, everywhere we go for trips and everything and off-roading and you're sitting for most of the time. And so this is a necessary upgrade for more than one reason and I'm excited to show you what we ended up with. So these seats have definitely been through it. They've been in the Jeep for 200,000 plus miles and they've definitely seen their wear and tear. Um, typically when we do Jeep modifications, we go over, you know, suspension, wheels, tires, that sort of thing. But, you know, one thing is you're in the Jeep sitting and the comfort level is also very important. So today we are going to upgrade these seats and since we have a theme going and the color theme and bright colors of the teal, you know, might as well go and upgrade to something that we're really going to love and it's going to really pop in the Jeep. So let me show you what we picked out. Enduro Elite PRP seats. Which are freaking awesome because you can customize them any way you want. Yes, there was a lot of options, so it was kind of hard to choose. I wanted to go with the color scheme I already have going with the teal, and this is called, I believe, Jewelry Box Blue, and it's not on the website. So if you have something you're wanting to do and it's on the website, you just can give them a call. They have this color, but for whatever reason, it's on the website. So we just gave them a call and they were able to do it the way I was wanting. And the cool thing too is you can give them pretty much any fabric so if they don't have it and you want it they're willing to work with anybody and get the seat you want so it's so cool how customizable they are i mean they have ostrich skin i'm like come on <laughs> like who has that but she's going to show you what we got so this is the prp elite seats where you can recline them back they have lots of options to do we went ahead and they have the elite logo here and you can put a brand or a logo there. I just wanted to change it up and not have Elite there, so I had one of our good friends make me a little logo of sorts to go there. I really love the mountains and moons and cactuses, so he put that together for me, which it came out really good, so thank you, Brock. Um, you have multiple options for the seat backing. I wanted to do the double diamond stitch to make it real plush and comfortable looking, and I think it looks really good. So there are infinite amount of color combinations and fabric combinations. We went with the suede backing for, it's super hot in Texas, so the last thing you want to do is to sit down on one of your seats and have it burning your bottom. So we went with suede for where you're going to be touching with your skin. And then of course the really pretty teal vinyl for the pop of color. Again, you can do it in different ways. They have ostrich, they have all kinds of different options for you to pick from which is really nice it was kind of hard to go through and make decisions but I'm really happy with what they came out and they have other options too we got the air lumbar support and heated seats so we can have maximum comfort now that it's winter time I'm super excited to get them installed so we can have warm bottoms when it's cold outside and the air lumbar support for my back when we're driving long distances to keep real comfortable while we're driving. Features we didn't do is they have a little pocket right here you can put on here like a goggle pocket that just sticks off the front and you can put anything in there. We didn't want that because I like the cleanness. I'm pretty sure you do as well. So we didn't do that option. And then they also on the back back here you can get a pocket which we opted not to get and then you can also get a bladder for like a uh, hiking bladder but they put it in the back of the seat so you can fill it with water and you can have water 
anytime you're out on the trail or whatever, if your kids bring a water bottle, you have a glider in your seat. So those are the three options that we didn't get. But we wanted to keep it real clean and simple. So I think it's really great. She did a great job picking all these cool features and different textures. So I'm excited. So the cool thing about these seats is you can put them in just about anything. But we need them for our LJ. So here he makes brackets to put them in the Jeep and the way they work is they attach to the bottom of the seat here and actually works with your addition, your original slider. So all you have to do is mount brackets to the sliders and then the seat can be up and optimized for your Jeep. The only thing you have to do though, which we're gonna do today, is we have to make a mount for the seat belt the buckle, which the PRP does not have on the brackets. So you have to come up with your own mount to mount the seat belt buckle if you want to retain your factory seat belts, which we do. And it, future we are going to do four point five point harnesses four or five we just want to be secure in the jeep so we're going to wait until we get a cage to do that but let's get these seats all bolted in this jeep first thing we got to do is we got to rip all the carpet out because that's a whole nother video but we've got the seats first so let's get the carpet ripped out clean the jeep out and then get these seats tossed in all right to pull the seats out of the jeep you need to take out the front screws first with the seats slid all the way back you're going to need a 13 i'm using a wobble and a little impact, and we're gonna zip these suckers right out of here. Just like that. So behind this one is a torque bolt. So you need a torque socket for that one, and the other opposite side is gonna be a 13 again. So all you do is flip the seat forward, scoot it all the way up, stick her in there, and like that. I don't know. You got hand control? Yeah. In order to get these off, kind of a little bit of a pain, so you're going to be here a minute trying to get it. So there's two screws on each side over here. So there's a screw here. You got to take the first top two out. So after you get those two out, there's two more on the back. here same side down there another one down there you may have to start these off with a open end wrench because my little impact doesn't want to grab the socket around there and get it off so gotta get in there those bolts were 13 and so then you also need to take out your seat belt let me get your washer behind there and also your plug Alright, so once you get those all loose, it basically moves this whole seat, so it gives you access to the bolts that are inside here. So you need to get all four of these bolts out. Best to use a ratcheting wrench, it makes it go a lot faster. Okay, these are looking pretty rusty crusty, so I'm going to take a wire brush and get them cleaned up a little bit and spray them with some Rust-Oleum so that, that way they don't break down anymore. Alright, we got the brackets installed, now we just got to get the seats on them. So this is the passenger, I'll let you, my manly man get it. Let me use this one. 
All right, got it all installed for the driver's seat. Brackets down there. <laughs> Found out the bushings are gone on this one, so we need to get some new bushings for the sliders so it doesn't make any noise. But other than that, this thing came out great. I need to install the heated seat still, so we'll do that here shortly. And then place to get this for the lumbar support and just probably shoves it back under there. That way you have access to that really easily. The only thing I have left to do on the seats now is install the seat belt. So the brackets don't come, I'll show you on that. The brackets don't come with any type of uh, provision for the seat belt buckle. So I'm trying to come up with a way to mount it. I was thinking on since this is the passenger side, so this side's on the inside. I was thinking maybe I can go under the bracket in a spot and attach it. I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm still trying to figure that out. But I will update y'all on how I did it. Other than that, Looks like we didn't get a set of bolts, so Nicole ran to the store to get the other bolts. We're gonna get these bolts tossed in here, and we're gonna get the seats thrown in to make sure everything fits, and I'll pull them out, and then I'll work on getting that installed. So, to mount the seat belt to these brackets, you can't reuse the stock stuff because it's no longer there. So we went out and did, so we went to the hardware store and got these L brackets, which work out perfectly on the driver and passenger seat, each side has this spot where the, the cables go. And there's a little kick out right here. You can see, it's a little bolt hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open that bolt hole a little bit bigger, and then I'm going to bolt this to that. And then we are gonna mount the seat belt bracket to this. So I'm gonna drill this hole out real quick. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Just like that. Fits in there like it was made to be in there. All I gotta do now, stick the buckle on and we're good to go. Just like that. And you have a seatbelt on your PRP mounts. Or technically your Jeep original factory slider. Alright, so in order to get the wiring all squared away for the heated seats, um, I didn't want to just run it to the battery and have it turn on and off that way it's kind of ugly and you like everything nice and clean so what we did is we ordered some piggybacks um, I think I'm not 100% sure 100 sure what these are called um, but basically what it does is it gives you the ability to piggyback off a already existing fuse that's already wired into your vehicle so we teed off this number 20 and that is a, what did you say it was? It just says extra fuse. So there's an extra fuse already plumbed in the Jeep. So we just tapped into that and then ran a hot off that and then wired the two hot wires and then ran the ground up there and then boom, we got power. And then for the switches, Nicole did the drilling and all that fun stuff. It's made it look really nice and clean. So we mounted them in this dead spot here on all the TJs usually have. And so it's perfect. It's like heated seats should have been there from the factory. But they all work and they work off the ignition. So with the Jeep being off, they can't turn on. So they could turn on and hit the key on. So that way no one could bump them or hit them while you're just sitting in the Jeep and you have 
something go wrong, but the good thing is about piggybacking off a fuse, it'll pop the fuse before it does any damage, but that's always a safety thing just to have it run off the ignition. So other than that, seats are in finally. And how we ran the wiring under the seats is there's a little pocket down here back where the so-called like wiring for a seat belt would be. So the driver's seat has that, the passenger seat doesn't. So I ran both the wires through there so that way it doesn't affect the seat when you're sliding it back and forth. Nice and clean, we're gonna tuck them up under here and then it's on to carpet, which is in the next video. So y'all stay tuned. We're getting all new carpet for the Jeep. That's why we left the carpet out of this thing when we put the seats in. Other than that, seats are in. Time for more updates. Yay. It's going to be cold tomorrow, so I'm so happy we finally got it wired in. It got cold. It snowed. <laughs> Perfect timing. We get to try our heated seats out. So, freaking pumped for that. And they feel good on my butt. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see y'all next time. Thanks again.